Hey, it's Jeff from CMAC here. In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to use the Rhino Slider. The Rhino Slider features a motorized track and swiveling base, allowing for precise and repeatable camera moves. The slider can be used with any one of our cameras that are available for checkout. For best results, however, I would recommend you stick with the X70s or Z90s. Anything heavier does have potential to cause issues in certain situations. We'll touch on that later though. But first, why would you even wanna check out the Rhino Slider? First off, it allows for smoother camera moves. You can program how fast it moves and how smoothly it starts and stops. You can even have it move back and forth continuously. This can be great for certain interview styles. You know, it spices things up a little bit. The main advantage, at least in my opinion, is that you can repeat the exact same motion over and over again. This becomes incredibly important for VFX. It allows you to do things like this. I can have a clone of myself in the shot even though the camera is moving. This effect can be incredibly difficult to pull off unless the camera is locked down. Aside from VFX, it also enables you to have a smaller crew. You can set up moving shots without having to find somebody to operate the camera. All right, so now that I've convinced you, let's talk about how you actually use it. That is kind of the point of this tutorial, so. One thing to remember is that the remote and arc head are battery powered, so you will want to charge them before use. We'll try and have it charged when you check it out, but it's still a good practice to charge it before your production. Before you set up the slider, you'll need to figure out where you're going to place it. If you're placing the slider on a table, you can use the swing out feet. This is by far the easiest setup to go with. Another common setup is using a tripod. How many tripods you use depends on which camera you're using and the move you plan to make. Lighter cameras should work fine with a single tripod. Just be sure to use the larger screw as well as the standard quarter inch screw and tighten them down. Not so tight that you can't remove it, but you know, make sure they're secure. For heavier cameras that plan to use the entire range of the slider, using two tripods would be advisable. The Rhino slider has threads on both ends to accommodate this. Just be warned that the setup can be more difficult to work with and set up. Now that we have the slider on a platform, let's plug everything in. The ethernet cable goes from the controller to the drive motor and the 2.5 millimeter cable goes from the controller to the arc motor. With everything connected, let's turn it on and get to filming. Start by unlocking the silver screw on the slider. This is the brake mechanism. Go ahead and manually push the mount to the side of the slider with the drive motor. Now press and hold the power button on the remote. When prompted, select the first option Rhino Slider EVO 24 inch. To do this, turn the wheel on the remote to navigate and then press it to select. This step is actually really important as it makes sure that the slider doesn't try to go farther than the track. While we're at it, let's go ahead and turn on the arc head as well. You should see text on the screen that says not paired. You can set that up on the remote. Go down to settings, arc, and then press down on the big scroll wheel to change arc from off to on. The text on the arc head should now read paired. If not, double check that everything is connected properly. To go back to the main menu, simply click the arrow button on the remote. This is the same button that was used to turn it on. The Rhino slider is now ready to use. If you don't want to mess around with programming repeatable motions, simply go to Live Motion and click the Turn Wheel to Slide option. Once you've made the selection, the slider should begin to calibrate. It'll move from one end of the track to the other. Be sure not to touch it while it's moving and make sure that there are no cables in the way. You can turn the wheel in order to manually move the slider. The more you turn it, the faster it'll go. To start making repeatable moves, go back to the Live Motion menu and select Create a Move. The slider will calibrate at this time. Once calibrated, the slider will ask you to turn the wheel to point the camera. Go ahead and point the camera where you want it. Then click the wheel. The slider should then move to the other side of the track. Now go ahead and point the camera again, just like before. Once set, you'll be greeted with a few options to mess around with. The in and out settings determine where the slider will start and end its move. You can have the slider move to these specific points by clicking the move to in slash out. Duration determines how long the move will be, and ramp determines the length at which the slider must travel before achieving full speed, and when it needs to slow down. Basically, it'll ease the slider in and out of the motion to create a smoother start and end to the move. Loop allows you to loop the move. Uh, by default, the slider will reach the out point and stop. If loop is set to yes, it'll continue to go back and forth between the in and out point until you tell it to stop with the controller. If all of the settings are to your liking, Go ahead and click Start. The slider will move to its first position and stop. Now click Go to actually begin your motion. 
Finally, the Rhino Slider does feature a time-lapse mode that you can access in the main menu. This feature allows the slider to move slowly for up to 12 hours. You can even connect your photography camera to the arc head and allow it to automatically control exposure. Connecting a photography camera may require more cables. And with that, you should have everything that you need to know in order to get smooth, repeatable camera movements with the Rhino Slider. Available right now for checkout at CMAC. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to level your tripod. If you like this tutorial, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And be sure to check out our playlist of other tutorials. You can stay up to date on all things CMAC by following us on social media. Learn how you can become a member with access to equipment, editing tools, and other resources by going to cmac.tv.